Problem two, use the bisection method to find the root to eight correct decimal places. All right, to begin for this problem, what I first wanna do is just go ahead and explicitly state what the bisection method is so that we can go ahead and hang on to this evaluation for future use. Okay, problem A, x to the fifth plus x equals one. So for this equation, it's pretty easy to figure out that the root lies somewhere between zero and one from simple guesswork. So let's go ahead and hang on to these two values and go ahead and define our f of x function to be f of x equals x to the fifth plus x minus one. Here are our two values in it from earlier. And let's just go ahead and define a third variable here called c for future use. Okay, so entering this for loop, what we wanna do first is set c equal to the midpoint of a and b. So in this first case, the midpoint is going to be equal to 0 0.5. And so what we wanna do next is run these three simple guess checks. First, does f of, in this case, 0 0.5 equal zero? If it does, break. What this first condition is doing is just check and make sure that we're not encountering any problems. And if we are, just automatically break out of the loop because we don't want to continue with this computation any further, okay? So if we don't encounter that error, next we want to see if the product of f of c and f of a is negative. If this is the case, then we want to set b equal to c in this case, and just go ahead and make our interval a little bit more precise for the next calculation. But if the product of f of c and f of a is positive, then we want to do the exact opposite in this case. So in this first case, we're going to want to go ahead and make sure that the interval isn't larger than it needs to be. And in the second case, we want to make sure the interval isn't smaller than it needs to be. And we're just going to run these four simple calculations again and again and again for a grand total of 50 times and just constantly keep updating C with the new value that we get from the bisection method. And then once we're done, we can go ahead and evaluate the value of C out to 10 decimal places to get our final answer of about 0 0.75487. Problem B, sine of X equals six X plus five. So same thought process as before, just go ahead and evaluate our function for various values around zero. And in it, when we do this, we find that F of X is going to be equal to zero somewhere between negative two and zero. So these are going to be our starting integers, which we'll define down here. Let's also go ahead and define our function f of x to be six x plus five minus sine of x, and then just find out where f of x is equal to zero. Run the same code that we did up above for the bisection method, just running these same simple four calculations again and again and again for a grand total of 50 times, evaluate the value of C out to 10 digits precision, and it looks like we get a final answer of about negative 0.9708 for our final answer regarding the bisection method. Problem C, natural log of X plus X squared equals three. So same process as before, nothing new here. Define our function called uh, in this case, natural log of x plus x squared minus three, evaluate the function for respective values near zero. And in this case, we find that the root for our function lies somewhere between one and two, define a third variable, run the calculations a grand total of 50 times again, evaluate our result, and we get a final answer of 1.59214 for our final answer for this third problem. Problem four. Calculate the square roots of the following numbers to eight correct decimal places by using the bisection method to solve the equation with the various values of A. State your starting interval and the number of steps used. Problem A, two. So to begin, what we're essentially solving is the numerical answer to the square root of two. And although it's unknown where the value of square root of two is, we definitely know that it's somewhere between one and two since the squares of one and two are one and four respectively. So we can go ahead and have one and two be our initial interval, and then just go ahead and copy and paste the code we used earlier for the bisection method, and just go ahead and declare it down here. Okay, so moving down to the code, we wanted to find a function f of x equals x squared minus two, a and b are our interval, and then c equals the midpoint of a and b. 
And we're just going to hang on to the actual value for the square root of 2 here in a variable called target, just so we know that we have the correct amount of precision for our answer. Okay, so same code as before, nothing new here, just running the bisection method again and again and again, running the same checks while we're at it, and then we get our final answer after a grand total of 27 iterations of our loop to find that the square root of 2 is about equal to 1.414. Problem B, what we want is the square root of 3, and using the same thought process before, we can go ahead and say that the square root of 3 is somewhere between 1 and 2, which is going to be our interval. Go ahead and define our function, variables representing the starting interval, as well as redefine our target variable to equal the square root of 3, and just run the same code over and over and over again for the same evaluation that we've seen countless times already, evaluate it out to 10 digits of precision, get our final answer, verify that it's true with the actual target value for the square root of 3, and as before, we find that a grand total of 27 total iterations of the bisection method are needed to find the answer to the level of precision that we initially wanted. Problem C. What we want is the square root of 5. However, in this case, we're going to have to change our starting interval to somewhere between 2 and 3, since the square of 2 equals 4, which is lower than 5. So same thought process as before with this new starting interval. Define our function, variables representing our starting interval, a third variable representing the midpoint, redefine our target variable, and then just go ahead and modify the code for this respective problem, running the same checks as before. Nothing new here. Evaluate our code out to 10 digits of precision, and we find that in order to get our answer to the level of precision that we want, we find that a grand total of 28 total iterations are needed for this loop. Problem 6. Use the bisection method to calculate the solution of cosine of x equals sine of x in the interval 0 to 1 within 6 correct decimal places. Okay, so same thought process as before, nothing new here. Define our function as follows, f of x equals cosine of x minus sine of x. F uh, define our two variables, a equals 0, b equals 1, to represent our starting interval, third variable here, and just run the same code as we did before, and we find that the root for our function is about 0 0.7853. Problem 7. Use the bisection method to find the two real numbers x within six correct decimal places that make the determinant of the matrix A, listed as follows, equal to 1,000. For each solution you find, test it by computing the corresponding determinant and reporting how many correct decimal places after the decimal point the determinant has when your solution x is used. You may use the MATLAB command determinant to compute the determinants. So, to begin, first, we want to go ahead and define our matrix A as follows, and then just go ahead and take the determinant of our matrix with this x variable. Now, when we do this, we find that the determinant A is equal to this polynomial here. And since we wanted to know when our polynomial equals 1,000, we can go ahead and subtract 1,000 from both sides of this equation to get our function as follows. Next, we want to find the zeros for this respective function. Okay, go ahead and define the function. And just go ahead and plot our function between a reasonable interval just to get a rough idea of where the roots are. And when we do this, we find that the roots are between 9 and 10 and negative 17 and negative 18, respectively. Okay, once we have all this information, we can go ahead and run the same bisection method code that we've been using time again for countless problems already. First, define our starting variables a and b to 9 and 10, respectively, for this first iteration. Go ahead and define the third variable c equal to the midpoint, and then run the same calculation again and again and again for our loop checks and evaluate the variable c for 10 digits of precision. Same thought process, only with a slightly different interval, negative 17 to negative 18. Just run the same code as above for this new interval, and we can go ahead and evaluate our numeric answer for second iteration and find our answer that way. Now, just for a good guesswork, I went ahead and solved the function above for our two intervals using the solve functions within Mathematica just to make sure that we are on the right track. This is our function defined earlier. Here's our plot. And then here are the solutions that we find for our final answer for x. We find that x equals 
9.708 and x equals negative 17.188. And as it so happens, when we use the onboard solve method within Mathematica, we find x matches our two previously defined values for x. And so at this point, we get our two solutions and we can go ahead and substitute these back into the matrix for x in order to get the level of precision needed. So first we're going to define x as 9.708. Go ahead and define the, uh, run the determinant function and find that when we run the level of precision for x using this first value, we get the solution is correct out to at least seven decimal places as stated in the problem. Same thought process here as before, define x, run the determinant, and once again, we find that the answer is correct to out to at least seven decimal places. Section 1.2, problem two, apply fixed point iteration to find the solution of each equation to eight correct decimal places. Problem A, x to the fifth plus x equals one. So to begin, what we wanna do for this equation is add two x to the fifth to both sides of our equation to get the following expression. Next, we wanna factor an x from the left-hand side and divide by this new term to obtain the following function, x equals one plus two x to the fifth over three x to the fourth plus one. This is the equation that we will be using for the evaluation of this problem. And we also know that this problem has its root lies somewhere between zero and one by simple guesswork, and also the fact that we saw this equation before. So we will go ahead and infer from this information that the midpoint is 0 0.5 and go ahead and invoke fixed point iteration to solve the problem. So to begin, define our function f of x using the x term we found here. Go ahead and declare a variable a that equals the midpoint. And then we want to enter our loop. So at this point in time, all we need to do is set a equal to the evaluation of f of itself. And then just run the simple calculation over and over and over again to get our final numeric answer and then evaluate our answer a out to nine digits of precision to get our solution form, which we find is 0 0.75487. So this is going to be our final solution. And if we recall from earlier, this is also the same answer that we got when we used the bisection method. Problem B, sine of x equals 6x to the 6x plus 5. Okay, once again, from simple guesswork, we can go and find that the root lies somewhere between negative 1 and 0, and go ahead and define a function as follows for f of x, and set a third variable called a equal to the midpoint. Okay, same code as before, just run the same evaluations for A and F of A and evaluate our answer out to nine levels of precision to get the following for our solution. So X equals negative 0.9708 for our final solution. And if we recall from earlier, this is the same answer that we got for the bisection method. Problem C, natural log of X plus X squared equals three. Nothing new here, but just go ahead and set f of x equal to the root of three minus the natural log of x, and then we can go ahead and start the evaluation that way and infer that the root lies somewhere between one and two from simple guesswork. Go ahead and set a variable equal to the midpoint, run the same code that we've seen before, and get our final answer of x equals approximately 1.592, which is what we found previously. Problem six. Derive three different g of x for finding roots to six correct decimal places of the following f of x equals zero by fixed point iteration. Run fixed point iteration for each g of x and report results, convergence, or divergence. Each equation f of x equals zero has three roots. Derive more g of x if necessary until all roots are found by fixed point iteration for each convergent run. Determine the value of s from the error e sub i plus one over e sub i and compare with s determined from calculus as in 1.11. Problem a, f of x equals 2x to the third minus 6x minus 1. Okay, so to begin, let's just go ahead and recall the function defined previously for s and just list it here for future use. Next, what we want to do is clear values for our f of x function and just print out some simple values between negative 3 and 3. And from simply evaluating f near the values of zero, we find that the roots are somewhere between negative two and negative one, negative one and zero, and one and two. And so we can go ahead and manipulate this problem algebraically to find that x is equal to the cubed root of one half plus three x, as well as x cubed over three minus one six. These are will be our first two g of x functions. And so when f equals zero, 3x cubed could be added to both sides 
to get the following, resulting in equation manipulated, to obtain the following, which is similar to what we did previously. And this is going to be our third equation. And we can go ahead and define those three equations as follows. First, what we want to do is find the root between negative 2 and negative 1. So what we want to do is just declare three variables here, a, b, and c, equal to the midpoint, and then run fixed point iteration for these three values for the three defined functions here. And then just run the same calculation that we saw previously, only for three values at this point. And then what we want to find is what is the values for a, b, and c in this case after running this first function evaluation, okay? So when we do that for a, this first function for this first value diverges, the second value diverges, and the third value actually converges to the value. And so for this third equation, when we go ahead and evaluate the value, uh, we're also going to go ahead and print out the value for s. Okay. That probably was a bit of a mouthful, but what we want to do now is just run that same code again, only this time between negative 1 and 0 for the second root. So go ahead and define our values for the midpoint and run the calculations one more time for our three functions and evaluate them down here as follows and print it out to the console. We'll get to the convergence in just a moment, don't worry. But before we do that, run the same iteration loop one more time for the root between 1 and negative 2, define our midpoint values, run the calculations within our loop, and print out the respective values to the console. And then, to conclude, we just want to follow and solve our equation f of x equals 0 out to 9 levels precision, just to get the solutions. So moving on to our iterations, we can go ahead and find that this first run for our first function defined previously diverges. The second one converges, however, not to the desired value. And then the third value actually does converge to the value that we wanted previously. And we're going ahead and also evaluate the value for s for this root and find that this first root is approximately equal to negative 1.64 with an s value respective of our theorem. Continuing on, for our second function, we find that the first function diverges, the second function converges, this time to the appropriate value. And our third function also converges to the root value. And we go ahead and find the respective s values for our, these two iterations as follows. One more time for our third function, we go ahead and find that the first value converges to the root. The second value does not converge, but the third value does. And once again, the s values are respective of convergence values for our theorem. And then just to check our work and make sure we're on the same path, just solve the above equations for our roots to make sure that we're on the right path. And we find that our solutions found here actually are reflective for our final answers. And upon evaluating these results with all of our information from above, we find that all the roots do converge to the respective values and the S values as defined previously corroborate our theorem. Just moving on to problem B, Run the same calculation again, define our function, evaluate near respective values, and plot our function. And we go ahead and get rough ideas of where the roots are. In this case, it looks like they're gonna be somewhere between negative 1.5, negative 1, 0 and a half, and then a half and one. And then just go ahead and manipulate our function defined previously to get three new g of x functions, which we can go ahead and define as follows. And then just evaluate the functions using the exact same code that we use for problem A, only with our new iteration values. We do that a grand total of three times and print out the results to the console. And at this point in time, we find that all the roots have been identified, but three separate equations were needed for this problem in order to find all the solutions, which in this case are negative 1.023, 0 0.1, and 0 0.78 respectively. One more time for our third f of x function, define the function, print out respective values to the console, evaluate the function on an interval, we get the following picture. And in this particular case, we actually found one of the roots by simple guesswork. And then we can go ahead and define three new functions as follows and evaluate these three functions using fixed point iteration for our new intervals as follows. Just go ahead and copy and paste the same code, but this time with different intervals and print out the results to the console. And in this particular case, we actually found 
that only one equation was needed to solve both of these roots because we found that first root value earlier. And this is actually fairly useful and find the roots to be negative 0 0.818, x equals zero, and x equals 0 0.506 for our final answer. And this concludes homework problem two.